Hey friends, so thank you for tuning into the uh, the first two installments of my video series on where to begin with Poi for the absolute rope beginner. Uh, in both of those videos, we have talked a lot about how Poi are built, that is, uh, what the hardware is like and how you should handle it and what you should look for in your hardware. Uh, in this video, we'll actually tackle some of the basics of the spinning of the Poi, which I imagine is the reason most of us are interested in, in the first place, right? <coughs> now, Specifically, I'm going to give you two concepts that I think are the absolute most fundamental ideas behind how we spin poi. They are plane orientation and plane facing. Now, you'll note there is a key word that both of those concepts share, and that is the word plane. So, it's also a word that you're going to hear probably more than any other word as people discuss poi. So, what exactly is a plane? Well, a plane in simplest terms, you could imagine it being like the surface of a table or a sheet of paper. Basically, it's a flat surface, right? And we use it specifically when we're referring to poi to talk about what happens as the poi spins around in a circle. Now, you'll note that as I'm spinning the poi around like this, there's an angle from which it looks like a circle and an angle from which it looks like essentially a straight line. I could take some time-lapse photography and really bring that... Uh, that effect out such that it would look kind of like a disc. The circle in here and the straight edge of it here, right? And it works just like that sheet of paper or that tabletop, right? There is an angle from which it is a large surface and an angle from which it looks like a small surface, right? So we would call uh, this concept a plane, barring the mathematical term, right? Uh, in mathematics, a plane can be defined by any three points or more specifically, by an object that's moving around in a circle around another object. It, uh, it, it, it defines a plane. So whenever we're spinning poi, we have a given plane that we are spinning the poi in, right? Okay, so what are the planes that we can be spinning in? Well, um, imagine for a moment that there's uh, a straight line going through your shoulders that would pop out of either shoulder going as far left and as far right as you could possibly imagine, right? Now, if we spin the poi in such a way that that disc is parallel to that line, um, and of course we're seeing the full circle of it, then we're spinning in an orientation that we would call wall plane, which uh, you, you can also kind of approach this by saying, okay, I'm spinning the poi in such a way that it's like a wall in front of me or a wall behind me. It's an easy mnemonic device to hold on to, right? Uh, the other, one of the other options that you have available to you is if, say, that disc is oriented in such a way that it is at a right angle to that line going through your shoulders, in which case we would refer to it as wheel plane. And of course, wheel plane has a number of different places it can be. It can be really far out to the side, it can be really close to you, it can be on uh, a wheel plane on the other side of you. Uh, there's a special case of wheel plane where it's like in between your arms like this that we would call an inside or buzzsaw plane. Um, but essentially 90% of the spinning that you're going to encounter is going to use one of these planes. And one of the really, really big hurdles that beginning spinners need to get into is to be able to control their plane and, uh, and keep it straight. You can think of this as being analogous to if you are learning how to play a, st a stringed instrument. There's that first part of the process where you're learning to hold the strings against the frets and be able to play them without them buzzing out. It's the same kind of concept. And uh, I have actually uh, at least one video that has tips on how you can begin to train your hands to do this. Um, once you have your uh, plane orientation in mind, uh, there's a similar concept which is uh, plane facing. And this is something that I didn't actually know how to name until very, very recently. But again, it's something really fundamental and I would argue it is the single biggest hurdle to get your brain over when, uh, when, when you're first learning poi. And to that end, I have this handy-dandy bicycle to show you, uh, g give you a demonstration of how this works. Now, if I were to say walk up to this bicycle right here and get the wheel turning, from the angle of the camera, it looks like the wheel is turning around in a clockwise direction, right? Whereas, if I were to look at the wheel from the other side, say in this camera, you'll note that it looks like it's moving around counterclockwise, yes? Which means that there's two sides to something that is moving around in a circle like this. I could even reverse the direction of the wheel, and once again, you're going to get one side that looks like it's going clockwise, and the other side is going to look like it's going counterclockwise, yes? Now, this is an effect that holds true wherever I happen to be oriented next to this wheel, right? 
So let's say I get it going clockwise like this. If I'm standing directly in front of it like this, I would imagine that this wheel is turning backwards because if I was sitting on the bike as the wheel is turning this way, then I would be moving backwards with it, right? Whereas if I walk over to the other side of it, now it appears to be moving forwards. Again, if I were sitting on top of this bike right now, I would be moving forwards in that direction, or at least the direction that I'm facing, right? Cool. So, this is going to be true of any object that rotates around in a circle. And it's specific, it's, it's very, very, very important when it comes to poi, because what it means is that any time you shift the movement of the poi relative to your body, that is, say, if I'm going to switch it to the other side of my body, it's going to look like it changed a direction on me. Uh, one of the first ways that we come across this is when we start working on, on turns with poi. So say, if I have the poi turning what looks like forwards to me, and I switch it to the other side of my body, and I then turn my body, it now looks like it's rotating reverse relative to me, right? And likewise, if I have it in, uh, in wall plane like this, and it looks to me like it is rotating uh, clockwise, and I know to the camera it looks like it's, it's rotating counterclockwise, as soon as I move it behind my back like this, now looking back on it, it looks like it is moving around in a counterclockwise fashion, right? So one of the ways that you can start to train yourself with this is uh, what I refer to as a tic-tac, which um, you can imagine this as being if you're rotating your poi forwards in a wheel plane like this, you could imagine being like a machete and you're trying to get through a jungle and you're going to take out a tree limb in front of you with a nice kind of diagonal stroke like that. At the bottom of that diagonal stroke, you're going to be reaching all the way over to the other side of your body. Now, it's still going to feel like the poi is rotating forwards, right? But if you walk your body around in such a way, and you want to make sure that the poi uh, stays where it is. It's only your body that's turning. By the time you turn all the way around, it's going to feel as though the poi is rotating in the reverse direction rather than the forwards direction. And we'll find this exact same thing if, say, we do another slice with that machete, say, upwards and towards our left shoulder. Again, if I rotate my body around, now it feels like it's rotating forwards, right? This is something that is really, really, really alien to the way that human beings think. We think that if it's rotating forwards, it should always be rotating forwards no matter where I am. And it's certainly possible to spin like that with poi, but it takes much more effort. And uh, I would say that right now there are not as many ways to make it look as beautiful as you could if you were keeping the plane orientation of the poi stable and keeping track of its movement relative to you, right? So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for uh, for tuning into this series. It's been really fun to put together and, and uh, challenge myself to think about. Uh, if you guys are ready to go embark on your flow journey and start to learn some basic tricks, uh, I have an awesome playlist of uh, beginner-level uh, poi tutorials that I would love for you to check out. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and please give those a look-see when you get a chance. Peace.